ghost is known to be a spirit or soul of a deceased person or animal that appears to the living, with the same likeness as to what their past appearance used to look like. The idea of ghosts is based on a very ancient concept that the living being spirit exists separately from the physical body and can sometimes acquire its personality and its corporeal features. Despite being around us ever since the cradle of our civilization, we still couldn't come up with a definite description of their nature. Like, who are they? And, what are they? Different reports of apparition classify different characteristics of a ghost. Some appear heavenly and mist-like, while some could appear as solid and real as an actual person. They could be visible and invisible. They could move objects or pass through them. They may vanish abruptly or just softly fade away. They may or may not have a mirror reflection and they're believed to linger around the place where they died, but also get to other locations as well. Evidence of the record of ghosts had been around since ancient Mesopotamian religion had first emerged. Their references can also be located in the scriptures of the Hebrew Bible, when King Saul disguised himself to consult the witch of Ender and bring up for him the ghost of King Samuel, or when the disciples of Jesus had mistaken him as a ghost when they saw him walking on water. Other accounts of ghosts can also be found in some ancient Greek literatures, like in Homer's Iliad and Odyssey where they were represented as rather neutral beings that provide advice and deliver prophecies. But what does science say about ghosts? Joe Nickel, an American skeptic, paranormal investigator, author, editor, and a columnist for the Skeptical Inquirer, states from his research that Appearances of the dead are often derived from visual hallucinations or, quote-unquote, other altered states of consciousness, most commonly in reverie. Hallucination has two types. The first one is the positive hallucination. This is when an individual's visual perception is exaggerated or when one sees more on something where there is nothing. The second type of hallucination is the negative hallucination. It is when an individual does not see the object that is actually there, or when something is removed from one's normal visual perception. Experts suggest that ghosts are caused by positive hallucinations. This would explain why some people claim to see ghosts where there are none. Nicole also argued that suggestive information fed to witnesses beforehand is one of the reasons for apparitions. This also happens when an individual starts to desire to experience ghost encounters himself or herself. The fallibility of human perception causes them to see and hear the things they had convinced themselves to hear and see. Another explanation for ghost sightings may have something to do with the way we see things, just like in this picture, or this, and this. The innate tendency to construct a meaningful visual interpretation of random objects arranged in a subtle way, creating a recognizable pattern or image where there is none, is defined as pareidolia. Pareidolia is a common type of apophenia where one draws meaningful connection or pattern from random things. It's not a flaw in the cognitive structure of our human brain, but a trait that we had developed through the years of evolution. A kind of natural instinct that had helped us survive. For example, a rustle in the grass could make a chimp jump back to the trees because of the sentence danger. Such evolutionary traits are used by skeptics to explain paranormal encounters. Pareidolia suggests that ghosts are just illusions our cognitive biases generate. It's all inside our head. The most practical way science has disproved the existence of ghosts is the physics way. The reason why we see things around us is, aside from the fact that we have sense of sight, is because objects absorb and reflect light which creates the image we perceive. For example, what the object is made of is one of the things that determines their visibility, whether they're either transparent, translucent, or opaque. If we consider ghosts as real visible beings, doesn't that mean that ghosts should be made of something that can absorb and reflect light, just like every other object? If so, they should be made out of something light that could vanish quickly within a second, yet strong enough to move and interact with objects, such as turning on and off the light switch or 
opening the door of your closet at night while you're lying in bed. The various depictions and descriptions of ghosts take a toll on providing a logical and credible explanation of their reality. The concept of ghosts is unacceptable in the scientific community, as it presents nor constructs a clear justification of the basic features held around them. Despite being present on the records of our human history, religion, and culture, no one could prove them true. And that's why ghosts aren't real.